All right, guys, welcome back. So I've pretty much finished printing out all the essential pieces, including the end caps for the rotor. These came out really nice. I printed these. I printed a couple of test ones out first on my FL Sun. But then I went to town with my V2 and they came out really nice. Anyway, the only rod I have is a 304 stainless steel rod. And it's the right length. Unfortunately, you guys seen it in some other videos. It has a ever so slight bend in the end of it. So it's not acceptable. So I'm waiting on a new rod to come in, um, which should be here tomorrow. I'm also waiting on the wire for the coils. Oh, by the way, this is the big Newman coil from RD3DP, from Redesign 3DP. Uh, here's a cut down smaller version of it that I just kind of slopped together. Coils came out really nice, but I'm waiting on 20 gauge wire because the largest wire I have, I think, is 21 gauge. And I don't want to use it. I want to use 20 gauge. So I ordered some 20 gauge wire. That should be in today. I could possibly start rolling these coils today. These are big. But with 20 gauge wire, it shouldn't be so bad. Stainless steel rod, the 304 should be here tomorrow. The magnets, I don't know when they're coming in for the rotor. The rotor's down inside there. It's the same thing as this little guy here. Um, they're two inch by one inch by three quarters, I think. And they go into the, let me get the rotor out. Come on. They go into the rotor here, which is going to make this one hefty rotor, but it should produce a lot of back EMF, um, especially with these monster coils. So I'm kind of waiting. I'm in a waiting game until the wire and the shaft come in. Um, so there's not much I can do with this guy. I've already played with him. I was going to take him apart and put spacers in there so that the rotor and play with it some more. But this was really just a prototype. I wanted to see, A, how I could feed the wires out. This is not going to work. So what I'm going to have to do is, and it's something I don't normally do. Normally I drill holes in the end, let me show you. Normally I drill holes in the end of the coil, right? So the start goes there, the finish goes there and it pops out. But in this kind of design, I'm going to have to have the wire just come directly out from the coil. And I'll have to figure out a way to secure it so I can then cover it in resin. It's, that's not a big deal. But I don't wanna leave you know, I don't want this to be the only thing. Let me put this wrench back. Um, so, so I want to give you guys something this weekend. So I'm thinking that I'll break out one of the oldies but goodies and fire it up. Maybe I'll play with the maglev some more. Or I'll break out the giant solenoid motor. It's down there. Or, I haven't fired that guy up in a while. <clears throat> he's he's pretty awesome. But yeah, let me um let me figure out which one I'm going to. Oops, which one I'm going to break out and fire it up using the dual JL ninety four circuit. So stay tuned. So I was going to, and I still am going to break out, this was my original beast. This is not a maglev. It's got, I think, six bar magnets in there. 
And I always forget that I wound this coil and wired it the wrong way. Normally you do a plus and minus, a plus and minus, right? But in this case, I put both the start coil, uh, the start wires in one terminal and both the finish wires in a second terminal. So this is effectively two negatives and two positives, but I forget that. So I go to wire it up and it doesn't work. And I'm like, what the hell's wrong with it? Well, it does work. It's just that I have to wire it the right way. Now, once this thing gets up to speed, it puts out a lot of killer. Like right now, those lights are completely solid for me. And this thing is flying. In fact, I got to turn it down a little bit. Let me turn it down to like 9 volts. So I have it on 10 volts now. And it's still flying out of control. Let me pull it down. And put it on like 7 volts. And that's even out of control. Let me put it down to 6 volts. 6 volts works, but it doesn't really produce a lot of back EMF. But I have those ceramic bearings in there, so this thing, and it's beautifully balanced. Ah, and I have it on um, plush feet or foam feet, so it just vibrates across the marble top I have here. But yeah, this is a nice rotor. Let me turn this off. Yeah, this is a really nice rotor. I built that a while ago. I'm going to have to, and I put these little clamps down here to hold the coil in place. But I don't have it set up properly. I'm going to have to set it up properly and then bring you guys back. All right, stay tuned. All right, so I got it mounted down. And it's running at 6 volts, and it's actually putting out more output than I thought. So let me, and actually it's not even done ramping up. All right, let me turn it up a little bit. There's 7 volts, a little higher output. Nice big fat air coil, and now it's starting to vibrate. And I... 3D printed all this stuff. This is the sliding mechanism so that I can change different size rotors in there. Let's turn it up to 12. Oh, that's actually, that's 11. Ooh, that's really going. Now we're getting solid output. There's 12 volts. Solid output. I'm going to try different, different coils on here, and I have to figure out a better way than to have these soft feet on here because it just vibrates right across the table. And those bearings, this thing will spin down forever. But yeah, I don't know. I thought that the soft feet would dampen the noise and it does help with the noise, but it just acts like an ice hockey table and just slides right across. I think this black filament, if I'm not mistaken, is, no, that's just regular PLA. I thought it was, 
the stuff that had the iron infusion. This has the copper in it. And just because I had it, that's why I used it. Came out pretty nice. All right, let me try some other coils. I want to try one of my um, Padini coils with the iron core. What happened to that puppy? Here it is right here. I want to try this guy. It's got the iron core in it. And then I want to hook up... Uh, I want to hook up a bridge rectifier and charge up the super cap bank all right stay tuned all right so this guy has the the iron core in it right there the one that i poured out of resin solid output that's at nine volts There's 11 volts. There's 12.5. And as soon as I get up to 12 volts, that's when it really starts to crank. So let me turn it way down. So there's four volts. See if it'll keep going at four volts. I think it will. There's no output. Yeah, it's still going at 4 volts. It just settled down. I wonder how low I can get it to go. There's 3.5 volts. It's funny because in real life when I look at it, it's... This is a blur, but on the camera, it looks like it's going slow. When in fact, it's really not. It's flying. I should get my meter out. So at 3.6 volts, yeah, it leveled out. So it's still working. I don't know how low I can go. Let me see how low I can go. There's 2.9 volts. Let me see what will happen if I take out the core. Can't get the core out. It's jammed in there. I'll have to take it out. But it's still going at 2.9 volts. Let's see how low I can go. There's 2.3. Yeah. Still working. Let's go a little bit lower. 1.9 volts. No, uh, no discernible output. But it's still going. Let's see how low I can go. 1.3 volts. I think that might be its limit. I can't tell if it's going to stop. Or if it's going to keep going. I think it's still going. No, I think it's finally, I think it's finally jammed it back up again. There's six volts. I wonder what will happen if I really jam it up to like, there's 15, 16 volts. Massive output.
Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's turn it back down. I mean, I trust the printing and I trust the PLA, but not at that speed. You know what? Let me put a um, some reflective on the shaft. There. I don't know if I should measure it from the shaft or from the barrel. The shaft, well, uh, I don't think it really matters. I know if I do it from the, the end of the barrel, it'll give me a slower reading. Um, but yeah, that's this guy here. Let me see if I can get... Ah. There we go. I can get the... Oh, come on. So, let's see what happens now. Still massive output. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make. I mean, I'm sure it does. try a different coil. I want to try one of my D coils. I haven't really used those a lot. Stay tuned. So I forgot that my D coils, even though they're beautiful, are only a single coil. They're not a bifiler. But then I was looking around and I was looking down here and I found some of these that I I think we're meant to be a pickup coil for one of my experiments. I forget which one. So I decided, let me try two of those on the JL. Because the whole purpose of this is to really play with the JL94. I know I haven't really done that many experiment experiments where I haven't taken readings or anything. But right now I'm just playing. So let's see. I haven't even tried this yet. Oh, it does work, and it gives off really good output. So, yeah, those these were meant as pickup coils for something. I forgot. Right now I have it at 11 volts. Let's try it at 12. And, again, the camera doesn't do it justice. I see a blur here. Oh, now the camera's starting to pick it up the way I see it. And we're starting the rotation again. All right, let me turn it off. I got to figure out something to mount this base down. But yeah, those are nice little run coils. I think I even have some cylinders that I filled with epoxy and iron powder that fit these. I don't know what I did with them. They're around here somewhere. Let's turn it down so it's not crazy. Let's turn it down to like 9 volts. 9 volts still gives a decent output, but it doesn't run wild. And again, I'm just kind of breaking out some old favorites of mine. I really like this setup because the whole thing was 3D printed. Obviously, except for the shaft and the magnets. But everything else was. Even the little tie-downs here were 3D printed. 9.3 volts. All right. Let me see what else I can do. Stay tuned. Had to come in and see how my capsules were doing. God, I love this printer. This is the best printer I've ever owned. It was only the third one I've ever owned, but... Yeah. 
and this is uh, one of Chep's fast profiles. I think it's the 0 0.28. And I decided to print them upside down like this with uh, some support. Because I think the last time I tried this, but I didn't try it on this printer. I printed them like this. And the top didn't come out too good. But these came out pretty good. It's a little rough up here. That's because I pulled it off too soon. I'll have to grind that down or file it down. Yeah, I pulled the... I think one of the secrets I learned when taking off um, support is wait until the print cools completely down. Then when you snap it off, it literally snaps off. If you do it when it's still warm, like this, see, it kind of bends. It doesn't snap off. So I'm going to wait until I might have already messed that up. But yeah, these guys go together like that. And there's a the capsule. So let me take these off at the hot bed. Otherwise, then they won't. Anyway, back to the motors. Oh, and really quick. So I'm not a spokesperson, nor do I even imagine ever to be have sponsored videos. But this filament, Voxel, I've tried a lot of different filaments from major name brands and nothing even in my opinion comes close to the quality for the price this is $16 for a roll and this is the best clear filament I've ever worked with ever I've tried a lot I I now only buy from Voxel if you order two, well, it used to be two. I think you have to order three now. But if, if you order two of them at 16 bucks a piece, free shipping. I think it, they bumped it up to three. But this is, and I was a little leery at first, but I heard about it from Modbot. And I trust that guy, so I wanted to try it. And sure enough, man, it is excellent filament. So if you're looking for inexpensive but high-quality filament, Voxel's the way to go right there all right back to the motors so my 20 gauge wire showed up this is a i don't know this is like a three pound yeah three pound which should be plenty to wire the thing but i also ordered some one millimeter nozzles for my 3d printer and this is what showed up an empty bag Fucking Amazon. Ugh. I mean, most of the time they're good. They're right on. But once in a while, that happens. An empty bag. And there was no cut in the bag. And now trying to get a replacement means that they want you to send back the defective one. I'll send back the empty package if they want. Stay tuned. So this is one of Sky's bifiler pancake coils. And it, it's shaking like that because he has um, iron infused in between the, uh, the coil layers, which makes for a very powerful coil. Very powerful. In fact, I'm going to have to pull it out because it wants, it constantly wants to. I wonder if I could put it underneath the, the glass. I mean, the acrylic. I don't, I think it's too far away. Let me jack it up. No, it seems to have still caught it. Yeah, so it's at 14 volts. Yeah, this is a powerful coil. I, I'm pretty sure it's definitely magnetic, or it's it's got iron in it. 
because it's attracted to a magnet. I don't know if the back of it, I think it's, I think he put iron, um, iron soaked paper in between each of his coils. Because I'm getting a lot of output. And you slide it out. Yeah, if you look in there, you probably can't see it, but I can see it. He's got one, two, I think three sheets. He's, this has got like uh, one, two, three, four, five, like ten different layers. It's a heavy coil. Ten different layers. And looks like on the, the third, the sixth, and the ninth, or the eighth layer... He's got a sheet of met of um, iron infused paper in there. Here, let's turn it down though. So that's at seven volts. Still really good output. Yeah, this is a killer coil. And it's being pulled because of the magnetic flux. Let me turn it off. Here, I'll let you see. Hey. So that is a nice coil. I've, I've not used it a lot, and I don't know why, because it's really good. Let me turn it on again, but turn it down even further. So that's three volts. Let's turn it up. There's five volts. Getting some output. Yeah, that's a cool coil. All right. Let me try some other coils that I have. Stay tuned. Here's one of the first pancake coils. I think it's the first pancake coil I got from Sky. That's at 10 volts. Really good output. All of his pancake coils and all of his coils are awesome. And that's pretty far away too. Forgot how smooth this rotor is. Let me get some. All right, let me get some um, uh, some reflective tape on there. See if I can't get some speeds. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see if it even works. Yeah, there's 800 RPM. Let's let it get up to speed. There's 1,900 RPM, 2,000, 2,500, oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> ah, not going to be able to do this and hold it at the same time because of the uh the vibrations so 2900 rpm it's about right i wonder if it'll actually do it off of the thing no it won't i should put a piece on the barrel itself I'm just messing around. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, 700, 100. No, it's still at pretty high RPM, but...
I've got another one somewhere. I've got to find what I did with that. I also got this thing, which is really cool. Let's see how hot these chips are getting. And it's not bad. 73. 72. Let's see what the resistors are getting. 68. 74. Neon bulbs. Let's see what the rotor is. 67. Seventy-two. This thing is pretty cool. All right, stay tuned. Let me bring you back after I make some changes. So this is a really crappy star coil that I tried, and it does it doesn't work for anything. I tried making one of these a while ago and encased it in a resin, and it just didn't work. I don't think I did enough turns. I'm going to try it again. Um, I just thought I'd give this one a shot just to see what it would do. Let me try it upside down. Yeah, something's not... There it goes. Yeah, no. Let me make sure I don't want to fry my beautiful circuit here all right let me get rid of this thing stay tuned this is another one of sky's coils i have it set up incorrectly though because this side is supposed to be just a pickup so if i take these out It'll just output on one side. And then I can actually get a pickup reading on the other side. But I don't want to mess with this circuit up. In fact, I got to check it to make sure I already didn't mess it up. Stay tuned. Yeah, the circuit's okay. I checked it on one of my other coils. Um, yeah, I still want to try my decoil. Got some big wire on that. I don't know why I use such big wire on there. Then I have the other decoil, the one that ex that kind of exploded. I could set it up like a dual, co a dual coil system. Let me see if I can figure that out. Stay tuned. So I've got it running just on the one side. I don't like doing that because I don't think this circuit was meant to do that. But it's okay. It'll still work. It's 8 volts. This is the other decoil. I don't know if you guys remember when I wound that. I blew it out. I was winding it too tight. It'll still probably work. But it runs nice off this one. It's not a bad coil. It's at 8 volts. Decent output. Steady output. Not pulsing. Let me see. In the... Yeah. Whoops. Keep forgetting that the magnetic flux will play havoc with these if they're not tied down. But that's a nice coil. For me, anyway. What I want to do is figure out how I can set up both of these, one on one side like this, and one on the other side, and I'll have to do it in such a way uh, where one is pushing and the other one is pulling, or vice versa. Let me see what I can do. Stay tuned. So even though that one is blown out, it still works. I mean, a coil is a coil. So let me see what I can do. I just wanted to make sure that it still worked. All right, stay tuned. Yeah, this is actually the first coil I got from Sky. And it works even if it doesn't, if it's not underneath it, just next to it. It's such a beautiful coil. I, I remember getting it thinking, oh my God, this is gorgeous. 
and you can see the paper in between each layer. I don't use paper, but that's what helped me to wind my coils was learning that I needed to separate each layer. I didn't need to, but it makes it easier to wind. Decent output. That's a nice coil. Eight volts. Stay tuned. So this coil is about 15 years old. It was from my Bedini only days. It even has the rods in there. Not bad. Eight volts. I could feel it pulling on it. This is a very old coil. If you go back to some of my earliest videos, we're talking 10, 15 years ago. Look at that. Wow, it's actually working better like this. That's weird. But if you were to go back, you would see this guy was on... Oh, I forget the name of the the rotor but it was a big thing on a wooden um, on a wooden base and it had four large arms they were like two feet a uh, foot and a half across each with big barrel magnets on the end of each one and I had them in PVC oh you know what I'm gonna try one of these guys I'm gonna try one of those I've got a couple of them. I don't think they'll do anything though because there's such thin wire. It might. But yeah, this coil was from that era. I also I have another one up here that was from that era. I don't know what the hell I was doing then. I don't know what I'm doing now. This coil was also from that era. This coil is about 10 years old. This is one of the first coils that I actually covered in, um, in uh, resin. Anyway... Let me hook one of these guys up just to see what happens. Stay tuned. Yeah, this coil is really old. This is probably about... This is probably about 10 or, 10 or 12 years old. And this is back when I wound it incorrectly, or I, I, I made the circuits incorrectly, or I would put both terminals both the positive on one side and the negative on the other side. And if I didn't remember that, it would make for an interesting short circuit. But I'm getting some pretty good output from this old piece of junk. Not bad, eight volts. And this does have an iron core. The core in this one is when I found someone said, go to the mechanic shop or your local car service place or even a gas station if they service brakes and ask them if you can collect their brake dust. And you sift through it and you uh, get the iron file you get the iron powder out of it that's what I used in this guy here and it works good I can feel the pull this is back when I made all my coils out of acrylic so I can just sit this guy like oops I could just sit him right there and he'll work but the vibration will pull it in closer Get it really close to barely touching it. Some decent output. Anyway, a little uh, 
nostalgic tour through my old coils. I think I've got a couple of more I can try. Stay tuned. This dude is really old. He was like, this guy's at least 15 years old. That's back when I made the connections on little screws. And this was just a, oh, and it's got iron in it too. I think I used the iron paste in this one. I'll try to hook it up just to see. It's really old. I'd be amazed if it still works. They, yeah, that really old one didn't work. I tried to hook it up, but nothing. I think there's probably either a short in it or where the wire connects to the... Where the wire connects to the, the nuts here is corroded or it's has a bad connection. I don't know. Or the wire's cracked. I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. All right. I'm going to break out the big guy. Stay tuned. It's working! It's working! <laughs> that is one rattly thing, but man, does it go. Let's really crank it up. 24 volts. Oh, yeah. Look at that output. It's working! Those are some nice coils. I had to break the beast out. This is probably one of my favorite builds because it's so strange, but it's so beautiful. I mean, me and uh, Spaceman Aust, Spaceman Australia, he designed and I built. Well, after he first designed it, then we both kind of had some design input, but he was the man responsible for the CAD drawings and I printed. And then he built one too. I don't know how far he got his, but he it took us quite a while, six months to a year. We went through so many different designs. This thing was first gonna be geared. These were gonna be gears in here instead of rollers. And there was going to be a gear here, a gear here, a big gear in the middle. And we figured out that the gearing thing just wasn't going to cut it. And this was going to have teeth on it on the inside to go against the gears. Right here, let me see if I can get it going again. It takes quite a bit to get it going. Uh-oh, one of my connections, one of my connections must, oh yeah, it came out. Ah, oh, crap. All right, stay tuned. It's working! I wonder if I put some of that reflective tape on there, I can get an idea of what the RPM is. I didn't, 
when I made these coils, I didn't think about how I was going to connect the wires to them because I was so enamored with how the coils came out. I didn't put the the blocks. I should have put the blocks here and here instead of on the top and bottom. I mean, I can always pop it off and move it um, or just get some right angle connectors or some um, little right angle wire pieces but yeah this is a nice design i have to wind the third one to put up here all right the wire came in so i'm gonna start winding coils those big doggies that i'm gonna put the 20 gauge on all right, stay tuned. So I couldn't leave you without doing the real beast. Whoa. Good output. But I got to be careful. Because this thing will get going. And this is old, so I don't know how... I don't know how well those are going to stay on there. Yeah, let me turn this off and slow this down just to see. Just so I could show you what we're dealing with. Ouch! Son of a bitch. Ouch! God damn it. Come on. So behind each one of these is a uh, flat... Uh, disc magnet like the ones that I had inside here and you can almost see the outline it's about a two inch and what is there ten wait one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah right one two three four five six seven eight there's eight of them here I don't know if you could see inside there I don't even know now you can see the outline of one kinda. I don't know if you can see that, but they're big and they're thick. And again, this is all just being held on with glue. One of these comes flying off and hits me square in the head. It'll be a bad day. I've had this thing up to some killer RPMs. It's obviously not balanced. Yeah, I'd have to. Yeah, there's the high end right there. So here's the heavy side. Um, yeah, I want to get it up to speed, but I got to step out of the way. So stay tuned until I can secure a coil in there and run it without me holding it stay tuned all right so i can do it like this and then stand off to the side it's weird how it's running pretty well off that off the oops off the side of the magnet like that i know a lot of the flux comes off of there or they or it comes off at the ends usually the short ends but i'm getting some good output Yeah, that is a beast. Anyway, I couldn't finish this little nostalgia uh, trip down Beast Lane without um, showing this guy. All right, stay tuned. Here we go. Now it's set up properly, but not close enough. But close enough that if I were to crank up the power. It'll get going, but I'm way off to the side, so let me crank it up. Yeah, that is a beast. If it throws one of those magnets, thank God it'll go either up 
or that way or down <laughs> or straight up my power supply I know I'm testing fate right Ah, oh, you can feel the wind coming off of this thing getting solid output it's blinking on the camera but in real life it's solid that's 16 volts let's crank it up whoops there's 22 volts yeah you know what I'm testing fate here let me get it back down to 12 volts and let me shut it off I feel the wind coming off that thing it's incredible and because I have it spread so far, that's why it's vibrating. It's not meant to be spread this far apart to hold the coil the wide way. It's supposed to be in the long way where I have more support. This is a cool stand. All of it's 3D printed. Oh, except, obviously, except for the acrylic. Anyway, stay tuned.